Have the Olympic Games been held regularly since 1896? No. In spite of the fact that international harmony, truce of God, is one of the hallmarks of the modern Olympic movement, the Games have been cancelled by the governing body, the International Olympic Committee. IOC, due to world events, in 1916 the Games were cancelled because of World War I. 1914 to 18, the 1940 and 1944 games were called off due to World War II, 1939 to 45. The games have been affected by international politics, occasional boycotts, and demonstrations as well. Though the 1980 Summer Games continued as planned, the United States and as many as 62 other non communist countries including Japan and the Federal Republic of Germany. Boycotted them in protest of the 1979 Soviet invasion of neighboring Afghanistan. The following Summer Games, held in Los Angeles in 1984, were boycotted by the Soviets. The official reason was cited as fear. Though some septics believed the reason to be more specific, a fear of drug testing. In 1968, in Mexico City, two African-American track medalists rose gloved and clenched fists of support for black power. Which earned them suspension and expulsion from the Olympic Village. Olympic history turned dark when the 1972 Summer Games in Munich. 11 Israeli athletes were killed in the Olympic Village by the Arab terrorist group Black September. A 1996 bombing at Olympic Park in Atlanta, Georgia also cast a shadow over the Games. Have the Olympic Games been held regularly since 1896? No. In spite of the fact that international harmony, truce of God, is one of the hallmarks of the modern Olympic movement, the Games have been cancelled by the governing body, the International Olympic Committee. IOC, due to world events, in 1916 the Games were cancelled because of World War I. 1914-18, the 1940 and 1944 games were called off due to World War II, 1939-45. The games have been affected by international politics, occasional boycotts, and demonstrations as well. Though the 1980 Summer Games continued as planned, the United States and as many as 62 other non-communist countries including Japan and the Federal Republic of Germany. Boycotted them in protest of the 1979 Soviet invasion of neighboring Afghanistan. The following summer games, held in Los Angeles in 1984, were boycotted by the Soviets. The official reason was cited as fear. Though some septics believed the reason to be more specific, a fear of drug testing. In 1968, in Mexico City, two African-American track medalists rose gloved and clenched fists of support for black power. Which earned them suspension and expulsion from the Olympic Village. Olympic history turned dark when the 1972 Summer Games in Munich. 
11 Israeli athletes were killed in the Olympic Village by the Arab terrorist group Black September. A 1996 bombing at Olympic Park in Atlanta, Georgia also cast a shadow over the Games. How old is baseball? Baseball, America's pastime, is more than 200 years old. According to legend, the sports originator was U.S. Army officer Abner Doubleday. 1819-1893, who was credited with inventing and naming the game in 1839, while he was attending school in Cooperstown. New York the site of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. But in 2004 a document was uncovered in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Citing a 1791 bylaw prohibiting the playing of baseball too close to, within 80 yards of, the town's meeting hall. Historians verified the authenticity of the document and its date. This is believed to be the earliest written record of the game and it establishes that the stick and ball sport was being played 42 years before Doubleday's involvement. Baseball historians have long acknowledged that the sport which is similar to the English games of cricket and rounders had not one father, but thousands. Although the 2004 discovery indicates that the game was already in existence. In 1791, and popular enough to be the subject of a town ordinance. It was in the 1800s that baseball developed into the game Americans still love today. The first baseball club, the Knickerbocker Baseball Club was organized by American sportsman Alexander Cartwright, 1820-1892, in 1842 in New York City. By 1845 the team had developed a set of 20 rules, which included specifications for where the bases are positioned and how runners can be tagged as out. The rules also defined a field of play, outside of which balls are foul. The so-called New York game spread in popularity after a famous 1846 match in Hoboken, New Jersey. By 1860 there were at least 50 organized ball clubs in the country. Union soldiers helped spread the game during the American Civil War, 1861-65. And the popularity of the sport greatly increased during the last three and a half decades of the 19th century. The first professional baseball team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings. Which began play 1869. In 1876 the National League, NL, was founded, it included teams in Boston, Chicago. Cincinnati, Ohio, Hartford, Connecticut, Louisville, Kentucky, New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, Missouri. By the 1880s the sport had evolved into big business. An 1887 championship series between Street. Louis and Detroit drew 51,000 paying spectators. The American League, AL, was formed in 1901, and two years later the two leagues staged a championship between their teams. In 1903, the Boston Red Sox beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first World Series. An overall increase in American leisure time. 
created by the innovation of labor-saving household devices as well as a reduction in the average laborers. Workweek helped baseball become the national sport and its favorite pastime. Played on an open field, the game harkened back to the nation's agrarian roots. But with its standardized rules and reliance on statistics, it looked forward to a modern, industrialized future. How old is baseball? Baseball, America's pastime, is more than 200 years old. According to legend, the sports originator was U.S. Army officer Abner Doubleday. 1819-1893, who was credited with inventing and naming the game in 1839, while he was attending school in Cooperstown. New York the site of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. But in 2004 a document was uncovered in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Citing a 1791 bylaw prohibiting the playing of baseball too close to, within 80 yards of, the town's meeting hall. Historians verified the authenticity of the document and its date. This is believed to be the earliest written record of the game and it establishes that the stick and ball sport was being played 42 years before Doubleday's involvement. Baseball historians have long acknowledged that the sport, which is similar to the English games of cricket and rounders, had not one father, but thousands. Although the 2004 discovery indicates that the game was already in existence. In 1791, and popular enough to be the subject of a town ordinance. It was in the 1800s that baseball developed into the game Americans still love today. The first baseball club, the Knickerbocker Baseball Club was organized by American sportsman Alexander Cartwright, 1820-1892, in 1842 in New York City. By 1845 the team had developed a set of 20 rules, which included specifications for where the bases are positioned and how runners can be tagged as out. The rules also defined a field of play, outside of which balls are foul. The so-called New York game spread in popularity after a famous 1846 match in Hoboken, New Jersey. By 1860 there were at least 50 organized ball clubs in the country. Union soldiers helped spread the game during the American Civil War, 1861-65. And the popularity of the sport greatly increased during the last three and a half decades of the 19th century. The first professional baseball team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings, which began play 1869. In 1876, the National League, NL, was founded, it included teams in Boston, Chicago. Cincinnati, Ohio, Hartford, Connecticut, Louisville, Kentucky, New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, Missouri. By the 1880s the sport had evolved into big business. An 1887 championship series between St. Louis and Detroit drew 51,000 paying spectators. The American League, AL, was formed in 1901, and two years later the two leagues staged a championship between their teams. 
In 1903, the Boston Red Sox beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first World Series. An overall increase in American leisure time. Created by the innovation of labor-saving household devices as well as a reduction in the average laborers. Work week helped baseball become the national sport and its favorite pastime. Played on an open field, the game harkened back to the nation's agrarian roots. But with its standardized rules and reliance on statistics, it looked forward to a modern, industrialized future. Who invented basketball? The ball and hoop game was invented by Canadian-American James Naismith, 1861-1939, in December 1891. An instructor at the YMCA College. In Springfield, Massachusetts, Naismith was asked by the head of the physical education department to come up with a game to keep students active indoors during the winter months. It had to fit inside the confines of a gym, have no physical contact. Use a soft ball, and give everyone who participated a chance to handle the ball. Naismith nailed two peach baskets, which he found in the storeroom, to balcony railings at each end of the school's gym. Found a soccer ball, divided his class of 18 men into two teams, and introduced the man as it would turn out. The rest of the world to the game, which was later dubbed basketball, two words. Improvements to the game came over the next two decades as it spread in popularity. In 1910 the important change of allowing ball handlers to move by dribbling was made. In 1916 the rules were changed to allow dribblers to shoot the ball. Who invented basketball? The ball and hoop game was invented by Canadian-American James Naismith, 1861-1939, in December 1891. An instructor at the YMCA College. In Springfield, Massachusetts, Naismith was asked by the head of the physical education department to come up with a game to keep students active indoors during the winter months. It had to fit inside the confines of a gym, have no physical contact. Use a soft ball, and give everyone who participated a chance to handle the ball. Naismith nailed two peach baskets, which he found in the storeroom, to balcony railings at each end of the school's gym. Found a soccer ball, divided his class of 18 men into two teams, and introduced the man as it would turn out. The rest of the world to the game, which was later dubbed basketball, two words. Improvements to the game came over the next two decades as it spread in popularity. In 1910 the important change of allowing ball handlers to move by dribbling was made. In 1916 the rules were changed to allow dribblers to shoot the ball. When did football begin? In ancient Greece and Rome, a game was played in which the object was to 
move a ball across a goal line by throwing, kicking, or running with it. Several modern games were derived from this, including rugby and soccer. From which American football directly evolved, in much of the world football refers to soccer. In which players are allowed to advance the ball only with their feet or heads. Historians generally agree that the first game of American football was played on November 6, 1869, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, when Rutgers defeated the College of New Jersey, present-day Princeton University. 6-4. They played on a field 120 yards long and 75 yards wide and used a round, soccer-like ball. Other Eastern colleges, including Columbia, Harvard, and Yale, soon added the sport to their athletic programs. In 1876 a set of official rules were compiled. In the 1880s Yale coach Walter Camp, 1859-1925, revised the rules, giving the world the game played today. He limited teams to 11 players, established the scrimmage system for putting the ball into play. Introduced the concept of requiring a team to advance the ball a certain number of yards within a given number of downs. And came up with the idea of marking the field with yard lines. When did football begin? In ancient Greece and Rome, a game was played in which the object was to move a ball across a goal line by throwing, kicking, or running with it. Several modern games were derived from this, including rugby and soccer, from which American football directly evolved, in much of the world football refers to soccer in which players are allowed to advance the ball only with their feet or heads. Historians generally agree that the first game of American football was played on November 6, 1869, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, when Rutgers defeated the College of New Jersey, present-day Princeton University. 6-4 they played on a field 120 yards long and 75 yards wide and used a round, soccer-like ball. Other Eastern colleges, including Columbia, Harvard, and Yale, soon added the sport to their athletic programs. In 1876 a set of official rules were compiled. In the 1880s Yale coach Walter Camp, 1859-1925, revised the rules, giving the world the game played today. He limited teams to 11 players, established the scrimmage system for putting the ball into play. Introduced the concept of requiring a team to advance the ball a certain number of yards within a given number of downs. And came up with the idea of marking the field with yard lines. How old is golf? Some historians trace golf back to a Roman game called Paganica when they occupied Great Britain between roughly AD 43 until 410. Romans played the game in the streets, using a stick and a leather ball. But there are other possible predecessors as well, including an English game, called Kambuka. A Dutch game, Kalf, 
a French and Belgian game called, Chol, and a French game, Je de Mail. But the game as we know it, the rules, equipment, and 18 whole course. Certainly developed in Scotland, where it was played as early as the early 1400s. The rules of the game were also codified there, the rules of golf was published in 1754 by the St. Andrews Golfers, later called the Royal and Ancient Golf Club. The first golf club, formed 1744, was the Honourable Company of Edinburgh Golfers in Edinburgh, Scotland. And it was none other than Mary, Queen of Scots, 1542-1587. Who is credited with being both the first woman golfer and the originator of the term caddy? The term is derived from the French term for the royal pages, cadets, who carried the Queen's clubs. How old is golf? Some historians trace golf back to a Roman game called Paganica. When they occupied Great Britain between roughly AD 43 until 410. Romans played the game in the streets, using a stick and a leather ball. But there are other possible predecessors as well, including an English game, called Kambuka. A Dutch game, Kalf, a French and Belgian game called, Chol, and a French game, Je de Mail. But the game as we know it, the rules, equipment, and 18 whole course. Certainly developed in Scotland, where it was played as early as the early 1400s. The rules of the game were also codified there. The Rules of Golf was published in 1754 by the St. Andrews Golfers, later called the Royal and Ancient Golf Club. The first golf club, formed 1744, was the Honourable Company of Edinburgh Golfers in Edinburgh, Scotland. And it was none other than Mary, Queen of Scots, 1542 to 1587 who is credited with being both the first woman golfer and the originator of the term caddy the term is derived from the french term for the royal pages cadets who carried the queen's clubs How did the jitterbug get started? During the height of swing music's popularity in the late 1930s and early 1940s, there were at least 50 dance bands with national reputations and significant followings. Dance styles such as the jitterbug were based on big band music. The dominant form of American musical entertainment during those decades. The dance itself is a variation of the two-step. Couple swing and twirl in standardized patterns, which sometimes include acrobatics. When was Hollywood's golden age? Hollywood had its heyday in the 1930s, in the same decade that the Great Depression crippled the world economy. The American film industry enjoyed its golden age. 
The era was marked by technical innovations, talking movies had made their debut in 1927 with the first full-length film with sound, The Jazz Singer, and by 1932 all films were talkies. The first Technicolor film, Becky Sharp, debuted in 1935, and by 1939 was perfected when Gone with the Wind was released. And special effects were brought to the screen in 1933 with King Kong. Which was the result of painstaking stop motion and rear projection photography. In the meantime, movie stars such as Clark Gable, Claudette Colbert, Greta Garbo. And the Marx Brothers achieved public followings that were the envy of political and business leaders. The MGM. Warner Brothers, and RKO Studios led Hollywood production, but other studios, including Fox. Paramount, Universal, Columbia, and United Artists, also fared well during these difficult times. In 1939 Hollywood had what has often been called its greatest year. Among the top releases that year were the classics Gone with the Wind, The Wizard of Oz, Stagecoach, Ninochka, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and Gunga Din. By the end of the decade Hollywood had become a major contributor to popular culture. An occasional contributor to high culture, and a dynamic, if unsteady, force in the nation's economy. What is Contract Bridge? It's the game most people play when they play bridge. A card game for four players in two partnerships who bid to name the trump suit. The other kind of bridge is called auction bridge, which was invented in 1904 as a variation on the card game Whist. Whist had been played since the early 16th century, if not longer. Auction bridge differs from contract bridge in that tricks made in excess of the contract are scored toward game, in contract bridge they are not. It's believed that contract bridge originated in 1926 when Railroad Air and Yachtsman Harold S. Vanderbilt, 1884-1970, invented the variation while on a Caribbean cruise. The game did not catch on until 1930, when Romanian-American contract. Bridge expert Eli Culbertson defeated Lt. Colonial W.T.M. Butler in a challenge match at London's Almax Club, the match was highly publicized. Have the Olympic Games been held regularly since 1896? No. In spite of the fact that international harmony, truce of God, is one of the hallmarks of the modern Olympic movement, the games have been cancelled by the governing body, the International Olympic Committee, IOC, due to world events, in 1916 the games were cancelled because of World War I. 1914-18, the 1940 and 1944 games were called off due to World War II, 1939-45. 
The games have been affected by international politics, occasional boycotts, and demonstrations as well. Though the 1980 Summer Games continued as planned, the United States and as many as 62 other non-communist countries, including Japan and the Federal Republic of Germany, boycotted them in protest of the 1979 Soviet invasion of neighboring Afghanistan. The following Summer Games, held in Los Angeles in 1984, were boycotted by the Soviets. The official reason was cited as fear. Though some septics believed the reason to be more specific, a fear of drug testing. In 1968, in Mexico City, two African-American track medalists rose gloved and clenched fists of support for black power. Which earned them suspension and expulsion from the Olympic Village. Olympic history turned dark when the 1972 Summer Games in Munich. Eleven Israeli athletes were killed in the Olympic Village by the Arab terrorist group Black September. A 1996 bombing at Olympic Park in Atlanta, Georgia also cast a shadow over the Games. When was the first movie shown? On March 22, 1895, the first in-theater showing of a motion picture took place in Paris. When the members of the Société d'Encouragement à l'Industrie Nationale, National Society for the Promotion of Industry, gathered to see a film of workers leaving the Lumiere factory at Lyons for their dinner hour. The cinematography of inventors Louis, 1864-1948, and Augusta, 1862-1954, Lumiere. Ages 31 and 33 respectively, was a vast improvement over the kinetoscope. Introduced in 1894 by Thomas Edison, whose film could only be viewed by one person at a time. The 16 frame per second mechanism developed by the Lumiere brothers became the standard for films for decades. The following year, on April 20, 1896, the first motion picture showing in the United States took place in New York. The film was shown using Thomas Edison's Vitascope, which was an improvement on his kinetoscope, and a projector made by Thomas Armat. When were the first Winter Games held? The Winter Olympic Games had a slow birth, making their first official appearance. Almost three decades after the first modern games were held in Athens, 1896. In 1901 Nordic Games were held in Sweden. However, only Scandinavian countries participated in the events which organizers intended to hold every four years. The Nordic Games constituted the first organized international competition involving winter sports. Then, as part of the Summer Olympic Games in 1908, host city London held a figure skating competition that October. Three years later, an Italian member of the International Olympic Committee, IOC, encouraged Sweden. The next host of the Summer Games, 
to include winter sports in 1912 or hold a separate event for them. Since Sweden already played host to the Nordic Games, they declined to pursue the IOC suggestion. The sixth Olympiad was slated to be held in 1916 in Berlin. And Germany vowed to stage winter sports competition as part of the event. But in 1914 World War I began, and the Berlin Games were cancelled altogether. After an eight-year hiatus, the Olympics resumed in 1920, Antwerp, Belgium. Played host to athletes, which included figure skaters and ice hockey players along with the usual contingency of gymnasts. Runners, fencers, and other summer sports competitors. The first IOC-sanctioned competition of winter sports was held in Chamonix. France, from January 25 to February 4, 1924. When the games were staged next, in St. Moritz, Switzerland, in 1928, they were formally designated the Second Winter Olympics. From that year, the Winter Games were held every four years in the same calendar year. As the Summer Games until 1994. In 1986 IOC officials voted to change the schedule. The result was that the 1992 Winter Olympics in Albertville, France, were followed only two years later by the Games in Lillehammer, Norway. The Winter and Summer Games are now each held every four years, alternating in even-numbered years. How old is chess? It dates to the Middle Ages, in 1283 Alfonso X, 1221 to 1284, King of Castile and Leon, Spain. Commissioned the Libro de Dres, Dados y Tublas, Book of Chess, Dice and Backgammon based on an Arabic text. This book is still considered an important source on leisure activities in the Middle Ages, 5001350. Mitchell later said that as he sat thinking about the tragic news, he wondered to himself. Here I am running around the world doing all these things, why not do them at home? Mitchell had spent his youth in Harlem, and he felt he should return there to establish a school to pass on his knowledge to others and to give black dancers the opportunity to perform. The primary purpose of the school was to promote interest in and teach young black people the art of classical ballet, modern and ethnic dance, thereby creating a much-needed self-awareness and better self-image of the students themselves. The idea was a success, during the 1970s and 1980s the company toured nationally and internationally often performing to sell out crowds and participating in prestigious events including international art festivals. A state dinner at the White House, and the closing ceremonies of the 1984 Olympic Games. Today, the Dance Theatre of Harlem is acknowledged as one of the world's finest ballet companies. Not only did Mitchell succeed in giving black dancers the opportunity to learn and to perform. He effectively erased color barriers in the world of dance, 
Testimony to the Universality of Classical Ballet Which Van Eyck Hubert or Jan painted the Ghent altarpiece? The large, multi-paneled altarpiece is as controversial as it is admired. The controversy stems from an 1832 discovery, under a coat of paint on one of its outside panels. Of a Latin poem that indicated that Hubert, 1395-1441, had begun the work and Jan. C. 1370-1426, had completed it. So it was believed that the Ghent altarpiece, 1432, was a collaboration between the Flemish brothers. But the question of attribution continued to puzzle art historians for a century and a half as attempts to assign different parts of the polyptych. Multi-paneled work, to either of the brothers failed to gain acceptance. One art historian suggested that Hubert may not have been a painter at all, but rather a sculptor. This theory posited that Hubert's contribution was only in crafting the frames from which the paintings had been removed in 1566 and which were subsequently lost. However, Scholars seem to have now reached the consensus that Hubert was largely responsible for the design of the altarpiece and for much of its execution. While Jan was the designer and painter of most of the figures. This elaborate altarpiece, which is composed of 20 folding panels, was typical of Northern European art during the Middle Ages, 500-1350 However, both Van Eyck's contributed to the flowering of Renaissance art in Northern Europe as well. In Jan's works, which are finely detailed and ornamental. He was originally a miniaturist and illuminator, the progression from medieval to Renaissance art can be seen. In particular, his painting Man in a Red Turban, 1433, which may be a self-portrait, marks an important step in the humanization of art. Prior to this, the artist's subjects had been religious in nature. Here the painting is simply a record of a living individual. This kind of portraiture began to multiply as artists and patrons alike became increasingly interested in the reality revealed by them. Through such portraits, man began to confront himself rather than the otherworldly anonymity of the Middle Ages. Renaissance art in Italy as well as in Northern Europe marks the climax of the slow but mighty process. That brings man's eyes down from the supernatural to the natural world, Gardner's art through the ages. Who was Hoyle? Edmund Hoyle, 1671 or 1672 to 1769, was an English card player who, in 1742 at the age of 70, published short treatise on whist, which provided the rules for a game that developed into auction bridge and later into contract bridge. Hoyle's name has survived among bridge players in the phrase according to Hoyle.
Why is Rembrandt considered the archetype of the modern artist? To understand the similarities between Rembrandt van Rijn, 1606-1669, and the modern artist. It's important to note that this master portrait painter, who broke ground in his use of light and shadow, was in his own time criticized for his work, some thought it too personal or too eccentric. An Italian biographer asserted that Rembrandt's works were concerned with the ugly. And he described the artist as a tasteless painter. Rembrandt's subjects included lower class people, the events of everyday life and everyday business. As well as the humanity and humility of Christ, rather than the choirs, trumpets and celestial triumph that were the subjects of other religious paintings at the time. His portraits reveal his interest in the effects of time on human features including his own. In summary, the Dutch artist approached his work with psychological insight and profound sympathy for the human affliction. He was also known to use the butt end of his brush to apply paint. Thus, he strayed outside the accepted limits of great art at the time. Art critics today recognize Rembrandt as not only one of the great portrait painters, but a master of realism. The Dutch painter, who also etched, drew, and made prints, is regarded as an example for the working artist. He showed that the subject is less important than what the artist does with his materials. Among his most acclaimed works are the Syndics of the Cloth Guild, 1662, and The Return of the Prodigal Son. C. 1665. The first painting shows a board of directors going over the books. And Rembrandt astutely captures the moment when the six businessmen are interrupted, thus showing a remarkably real everyday scene. The Return of the Prodigal Son is one of the most moving religious paintings of all time. Here Rembrandt has with great compassion rendered the reunion of father and son. Capturing that moment of mercy when the contrite son kneels before his forgiving father. Through his series of self-portraits, Rembrandt documented his own history from the confidence and optimism of his youth to the worn resignation of his declining years. What are the milestones in the motion picture industry? Motion pictures continue to develop as new. Sophisticated technologies are introduced to improve the moviegoing experience for audiences. In the decades following their rudimentary beginnings, there were many early milestones. Including not only advancements in technology but improvements. In conditions for those working in the then fledgling industry, 1903, Edwin S. Porter's The Great Train Robbery was the first motion picture to tell a complete story. Produced by Edison Studios, the 12-minute epic established a pattern of suspense drama that was followed by subsequent movie makers. 1907 Bell and Howell Co. was founded by Chicago movie projectionist Donald H. Bell and camera repairman Albert S. Howell with $5. 000 in capital
the firm went on to improve motion picture photography and projection equipment. 1910, Brooklyn Eagle newspaper cartoonist John Randolph Bray pioneered animated motion picture cartoons. Using a cell system he invented and which was subsequently used by all animators. 1912, Queen Elizabeth, starring Sarah Bernhardt, was shown July 12 at New York's Lyceum. Theater and was the first feature-length motion picture seen in America. 1915, D.W. Griffiths. The Birth of a Nation provided the blueprint for narrative films. 1925. The new editing technique used in Potemkin revolutionized the making of motion pictures around the world. Soviet film director Sergei Eisenstein created his masterpiece by splicing film shot at many locations. An approach subsequently adopted by most film directors. 1926, the first motion picture with sound, talkie, was demonstrated. 1927, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences was founded by Louis B. Meyer of MGM Studios. The first president of the Academy was Douglas Fairbanks. 1927, the first full-length talking picture, The Jazz Singer, starring vaudevillian Al Jolson, was released. By 1932 all movies talked. 1929, the first Academy Awards. Four 1928 films, were held, winners were William Wellman for Wings. Emil Janings for Best Actor, in Last Command, and Janet Gaynor for Best Actress, in Sunrise. Movie columnist Sidney Skalski dubbed the awards the Oscars. 1928, Hollywood's major film studios signed an agreement with the American Telephone and Telegraph Corporation. AT&T, to use their technology to produce films with sound. Leading to an explosion in the popularity of motion pictures. 1929, Eastman Kodak introduced 16mm film for motion picture cameras. 1933, the Screen Actors Guild, SAG, was formed when six actors met in Hollywood to establish a self-governing organization of actors. The first organizing meeting yielded 18 founding members. 1935, the first full-length Technicolor movie was released, Becky Sharp. The technology, however, was still in development, and the colors appeared garish. 1939, Gone with the Wind was released in Technicolor, which had come a long way since its 1935 debut. How long has the waltz been danced? Considered the quintessential ballroom dance, the waltz first became popular in Europe in 1813. But it dates as far back as the mid-1700s, the first written occurrence of the word waltz was in 1781. In the 1850s the dance captivated Vienna, and the prolific Johann Strauss, 1825-1899. Also known as the Waltz King, produced scores of new waltzes to meet the increasing demand. Many of the compositions were named for professional associations and societies. One of the most well-known waltzes is the Blue Danube. 
first performed by Strauss on February 15, 1867, in Vienna. The lyrics, from a poem by Karl Beck, were sung by the Viennese Male Singing Society. The new waltz created an immediate sensation. It is an Austrian tradition whenever the Blue Danube is played that the opening strain is played first. Followed by a pause before the work is played by the full orchestra. The pause is so that the audience may applause. How did American Mary Cassatt join the Paris art world of the Impressionists? Mary Cassatt, 1844-1926, the daughter of a wealthy investment banker from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania traveled to Paris in 1866 in the company of her mother and some women friends. The young Cassatt was determined to join the city's community of artists. Since women were not allowed to enroll in classes at Paris's Institute of Beaux-Arts, the policy was changed in 1897, Cassatt privately studied painting and traveled in Europe, pursuing her artistic interests. Returning to Paris in 1874, she became acquainted with Edgar Degas, 1834-1917, who remarked that the American artist possessed an infinite talent and that she was a person who feels as I do. He made these observations after viewing one of her paintings at the Salon d'Automne in Paris. Cassatt went on to exhibit with the Impressionists in 1879, 1880, 1881, and 1886, gaining her first solo exhibit in 1891. Judith Barter Curator of American Arts at the Art Institute of Chicago and organizer of The Traveling Exhibit Mary Cassatt, Modern Woman describes Cassatt as a very good businesswoman, who knew how to market her career. During three and a half years of research, which she conducted to launch the exhibit, Barter explored the prevailing social climate of the day, the late 19th century was a time when feminists who organized to campaign for political and social reforms, eventually winning women the vote in 1920. Focused on maternity, encouraging women to be involved in caring for their children. To Cassatt, observed Barter, maternity was the highest expression of womanhood. Women and children were the subjects of Cassatt's body of works. Which includes oil paintings, pastels, prints, and etchings. Cassatt's place among the Impressionists has often been overshadowed by her male colleagues. And her contributions to the art world are mentioned only in passing in many art books. But her talent, insights, and sheer determination combine to create an impressive legacy. As Gauguin quipped, Mary Cassatt has charm but she also has force. What was the Hollywood blacklist? In 1947 studio executives assembled at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York put together a list of alleged communist sympathizers. Naming some 300 writers, directors, actors, 
and others known or suspected to have Communist Party affiliations or of having invoked the Fifth Amendment against. Self-incrimination when questioned by the House Committee to investigate un-American activities. The Hollywood Ten who refused to tell the committee whether or not they had been communists were Alva Bessie. Herbert Biberman, Lester Cole, Edward Dmytryk, Ring Lardner Jr. John Howard Lawson, Albert Maltz, Samuel Ornitz, Adrian Scott, and Dalton Trumbo. The film industry blacklisted the Hollywood Ten on November 25th. And all of them drew short prison sentences for refusing to testify. How old is baseball? Baseball, America's pastime, is more than 200 years old. According to legend, the sports originator was U.S. Army officer Abner Doubleday. 1819-1893, who was credited with inventing and naming the game in 1839, while he was attending school in Cooperstown. New York, the site of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. But in 2004 a document was uncovered in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Citing a 1791 bylaw prohibiting the playing of baseball too close to, within 80 yards of, the town's meeting hall. Historians verified the authenticity of the document and its date. This is believed to be the earliest written record of the game and it establishes that the stick and ball sport was being played 42 years before Doubleday's involvement. Baseball historians have long acknowledged that the sport, which is similar to the English games of cricket and rounders, had not one father, but thousands. Although the 2004 discovery indicates that the game was already in existence, in 1791, and popular enough to be the subject of a town ordinance. It was in the 1800s that baseball developed into the game Americans still love today. The first baseball club, the Knickerbocker Baseball Club, was organized by American sportsman Alexander Cartwright, 1820-1892, in 1842 in New York City. By 1845 the team had developed a set of 20 rules, which included specifications for where the bases are positioned and how runners can be tagged as out. The rules also defined a field of play, outside of which balls are foul. The so-called New York game spread in popularity after a famous 1846 match in Hoboken, New Jersey. By 1860 there were at least 50 organized ball clubs in the country. Union soldiers helped spread the game during the American Civil War, 1861-65. And the popularity of the sport greatly increased during the last three and a half decades of the 19th century. The first professional baseball team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings, which began play 1869. In 1876, the National League, NL, was founded, it included teams in Boston, Chicago. Cincinnati, Ohio, Hartford, Connecticut, Louisville, Kentucky, New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, Missouri. By the 1880s the sport had evolved into big business. 
an 1887 championship series between St. Louis and Detroit drew 51,000 paying spectators. The American League, AL, was formed in 1901, and two years later the two leagues staged a championship between their teams. In 1903, the Boston Red Sox beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first World Series. An overall increase in American leisure time. Created by the innovation of labor-saving household devices as well as a reduction in the average laborers. Work week helped baseball become the national sport and its favorite pastime. Played on an open field, the game harkened back to the nation's agrarian roots. But with its standardized rules and reliance on statistics, it looked forward to a modern, industrialized future. Of the great trio of high renaissance artists Leonardo Michelangelo, and Raphael who is considered the master? Most historians and critics agree that it was Raphael Sanzio. 1483-1520, who most clearly stated the ideals of the High Renaissance. Though arch-rivals Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519, and Michelangelo. Bonarotti, 1475-1564, influenced the younger Raphael, he developed his own style. A prolific painter, he was also a great technician whose work is characterized by a seemingly effortless grace. His most well-known work is the School of Athens, 1509-11. Which has been called a complete statement of the High Renaissance in its artistic form and spiritual meaning. The painting, which projects a stage-like space onto a two-dimensional surface, reconvenes the great minds of the ancient world Plato, Aristotle, Pythagoras, Heraclitos, Diogenes, Euclid for an exchange of ideas. Raphael even included himself in this gathering of greatness. But it seems only appropriate for the master to be in such company, in this work. Raphael has achieved the art of perspective. Bringing the discipline of mathematics to pictorial space where human figures appear to move naturally. When was photography invented? The concept of still photography dates back to the 10th century when Islamic scientists developed the camera obscura. Latin for dark chamber, a darkened enclosure with a small aperture, opening, to admit light. The light rays would cast an inverted image of external objects onto a flat surface opposite the aperture. This image could be studied and traced by someone working inside the camera obscura. Or the image could be viewed from the outside of the camera, through a peephole. In the 16th century, the Italian scientist Gian Battista della Porta, c. 1535-1615, published his studies on fitting the aperture of the camera. Obscura with a lens to strengthen or enlarge the image projected. Made increasingly versatile through additional improvements. 
the camera obscura become popular among 17th and 18th century European artists. But the camera obscura could only project, rather than reproduce, images onto a screen or a piece of paper. During the 1800s scientists experimented with ways of making the images permanent. Among those who made advances in the photographic process were French physicist Joseph Nicephore Niepce. 1765-1833, who produced the first negative image in 1826, French painter Louis Jacques Daguerre. 1759-1851, who in 1839 succeeded in making a direct positive image on a silver plate. Known as the daguerreotype, English scientist William Henry Fox Talbot, 1800-1877, who developed a paper negative, c. 1841, that could be used to print any number of paper positives, and English astronomer Sir John Herschel. 1792-1891, who was the first to produce a practical photographic fixing. Agent and the first to apply the terms positive and negative to photographic images. All of these milestones made photography a practical way of permanently recording real-life images. The breakthrough in still photography was the Kodak. Introduced in 1888 by American inventor George Eastman, 1854 to 1932. The Kodak camera used film that was wound on rollers. Eliminating the glass photographic plates that had been in use. The box-shaped camera made photography accessible to everyone including amateurs. By the early 1900s the Eastman Kodak Company had become the largest photographic film and camera producer in the world. George Eastman has been credited with mass-producing the moment, before the Kodak. A word he made up because he was fond of the letter K, photography had largely been the domain of professionals who were commissioned to take portraits of the well-to-do prominent members of society. Once the Kodak became widely available, photographs preserved the faces of ordinary people and the events of everyday life. When were the first Olympic Games? The Olympics date to about 900 B. C. When, in ancient Greece, tens of thousands of sandal-wearing spectators descended on Olympia to cheer the runners. Wrestlers, and bare-skinned boxers competing there. The Games at Olympia were one of four athletic festivals in Greece, the others being the Ismian Games at Corinth. The Nemean Games, and the Pythian Games at Delphi, all of which alternated to form the Periodos. Or circuits, which guaranteed sports fans the opportunity to attend an athletic festival every year. Winning was everything then, athletes were required to register in order to compete. And rumors of Herculean opponents sometimes prompted competitors to withdraw. Victors were awarded crowns of olive leaves. And the second and third place finishers returned home undecorated. The modern Olympic Games, begun by diminutive Frenchman Baron Pierre de Coubertin. 1862-1937, possess a decidedly different spirit than did their ancient counterpart where the only rules were that participants were not allowed to gouge. 
bite, put a knee to the groin, strangle, or throw sand at their opponent. The modern Olympic Games, publicly proposed by Coubertin on November 25, 1892, in Paris. And first held in Athens, Greece, in 1896, are based on their initiator's vision of the Olympic competition as an occasion to promote peace, harmony, and internationalism. In April 1896 some 40,000 spectators pressed into the Panathenaean Stadium, which had been constructed on the site of an ancient stadium in Athens, to witness the athletic feats of the first modern Olympic heroes. Thirteen nations participated, only male athletes, just more than 300 of them. Competed, and Greece received the most medals, 47. The second Olympic Games were held in 1900 in Paris. Who founded the Dance Theatre of Harlem? The Dance Theatre of Harlem, the first world-renowned African-American ballet company, was founded by Arthur Mitchell, 1934, a principal dancer with the New York City Ballet. Along with Carol Shook, 1920-1985, a dance teacher and former director of the Netherlands Ballet. The impetus for the creation of the company came on April 4, 1968, while Mitchell was waiting to board a plane from New York City to Brazil, where he was establishing that country's first national ballet company and he heard that Martin Luther King Jr., 1929-1968, had been assassinated. What were newsreels? Newsreels got their start in 1910 when the pioneer film Newsreel Path Gazette was shown in Britain and the United States. French cinematographer Charles Path, 1863-1957, and his brother Emile, 1860-1937, were Paris agents for the Edison phonograph. They visited London to acquire filmmaking equipment and secured financial support in order to set up production units in Britain, the United States, Italy, Germany, Russia, and Japan. These short movies, covering current events, were predominantly used during wartime and were shown in theaters before motion pictures were shown. Superseded by television newscasts, the last newsreels were screened in 1967. How is Picasso's work characterized? It's impossible to characterize or classify the work of Spaniard Pablo Picasso, 1881-1973. Since his career as an artist spanned his entire life and he experimented with many disciplines. Picasso often claimed that he could draw before he could speak. And by all accounts he spent much of his childhood engaged in drawing. He was only 15 years old when he submitted his first works for exhibition. And by the turn of the century, when he was still a young man, 
he began exploring the blossoming modern art movement. The rest of his career breaks into several periods. His Blue Period, 1901-04, was named for the monochromatic use of the color for its subjects. And was likely the result of a despair brought on by the suicide of a friend. Next came his Rose Period, beginning 1905. When images of harlequins and jesters appear in his works all to a somewhat melancholic effect. He soon began to incorporate aspects of primitive art, and later experimented with geometric line and form in his works. Which were constructions or deconstruct ions sometimes only identifiable by their title. In the spring of 1912 Cubism exploded, and Picasso was on its forefront. In 1923 he broke new ground with Surrealism. The key masterpiece in his body of works came in 1937 when he painted Guernica. His rendering of the horror of the German attack, supported by Spanish fascists, on the small Basque town, of Guernica, in Spain. His career reached its height during the 1940s, during which he lived in Nazi-occupied Paris. Biographer Pierre Cabain summed up the last period, 1944-73, of Picasso's work. He invented a second classicism. Autobiographical Classicism. His final 30 years were to be a dizzying, breakneck race toward creation. During this time, Picasso did not chart any new artistic territory. But simply created art at an amazing rate. After his death in 1973, his estate yielded an inventory of 35,000 remaining works paintings. Drawings, sculptures, ceramics, prints, and woodcuts. He left an enormous even mind-boggling legacy to the art world. In a 1991 article in Vanity Fair, Picasso's friend and biographer John Richardson observed. Almost every artist of any interest who's worked in the last 50 years is indebted to Picasso, whether he's reacting against him knowingly or is unwittingly influenced by him. Picasso sowed the seeds whose fruits we are continuing to reap. Who was Dame Margot Fontaine? Fontaine, 1919-1991, has been called an international ambassador of dance. The British-trained ballerina achieved worldwide fame and recognition during more than 34 years with the Royal Ballet. Expanding the company's female repertoire and becoming the model for the modern ballerina. In 1962, at the age of 43, Fontaine formed a dance partnership with Soviet defector Rudolf Nureyev. 1938-1993, Challenging Traditional Assumptions About the ability of mature dancers to continue vigorous performance careers. In her later years, she continued to be active in the world of dance, helping set up dance scholarships. Fostering international artistic relations, and encouraging the growth of dance institutions around the world. So much art is called impressionistic today. What exactly is impressionism?
the term Impressionism was derived by a rather mean-spirited art critic from the title of one of Claude Monet's. 1840-1926, Early Paintings, Impression, Fog, La Havre, 1872. The French Impressionist painters were interested in the experience of the natural world and in rendering it exactly as it is seen not fixed and frozen with an absolute perspective, but rather as constantly changing and as it is glimpsed by a moving eye. Georges Seurat, 1859-1891, and Paul Signac, 1863-1935, are also typically thought of as Impressionists. However, they are more appropriately dubbed Neo-Impressionists since they along with Camille Pissarro, 1830-1903, advanced the work of the original group through more scientific theories of light and color, introducing deliberate optical effects to their works. Seurat and Signac are commonly referred to as Pointeists for the technique. Pioneered by Seurat, of using small brush strokes to create an intricate mosaic effect. The post-impressionists, artists representing a range of explorations but all having come out of the impressionist movement. Included both Seurat and Signac, as well as Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec. 1864-1901, Paul Gauguin, 1848-1903, Vincent van Gogh, 1853-1890. And Paul Cezanne, 1839-1906, who was also associated with the original Impressionists. Together the Impressionists paved the way for the art of the 20th century. Since as a group they asserted the identity of a painting as a thing, a created object in its own right. With its own structure and its own laws beyond and different from, the world of man and nature, history of modern art. Who invented basketball? The ball and hoop game was invented by Canadian-American James Naismith, 1861-1939, in December 1891. An instructor at the YMCA College. In Springfield, Massachusetts, Naismith was asked by the head of the physical education department to come up with a game to keep students active indoors during the winter months. It had to fit inside the confines of a gym, have no physical contact. Use a soft ball, and give everyone who participated a chance to handle the ball. Naismith nailed two peach baskets, which he found in the storeroom, to balcony railings at each end of the school's gym. Found a soccer ball, divided his class of 18 men into two teams, and introduced them and as it would turn out. The rest of the world to the game, which was later dubbed basketball, two words. Improvements to the game came over the next two decades as it spread in popularity. In 1910 the important change of allowing ball handlers to move by dribbling was made. In 1916 the rules were changed to allow dribblers to shoot the ball. In 